I want to get back to this uh, rising protest in Iran now. As massive anti-government protests enter now their eighth day with scenes like these. <laughs> Big crowds there in the towns outside of Tehran, the capital city. At least 20 protesters have died since the demonstration started. A new Wall Street Journal op-ed arguing that the world must now decide whether or not there are true Iranian partners on the government that signed the nuclear deal or the people you see in the streets today. Saying, quote, the moment has arrived to admit that Iran's missiles, nuclear technology, and armies won't stay inside its borders until the people getting shot in the streets are recognized and supported by a two timid world, end quote. Dan Henninger, Wall Street Journal. With me now, retired four-star General Jack Keane, chairman for the Institute for Study of War and a Fox News senior strategic analyst. How you doing? Yeah, good to be here, Bill. Heather Nauert was with us about 90 minutes ago from the State Department. I'll play a clip in a moment here. But first, I, I want you to be able to frame this situation in the following way. Are these protesters stronger than they were in 2009? Is the potential for a regime overthrow there? Or is it exaggerated? Well, I, the, the crowd in Tehran in 2009 was 3 million, and, and that was massive. It was as a result of a, a phony election. I think the fissures here are considerably deeper. It cuts right across the political and social fabric of the entire nation, because there's dozens of cities involved. In 2009, it was largely urban elite. This represents the entire social fabric, and there's a lot of younger people involved in this demonstration. So I think the Iranians are going to take a long time if they ever recover from this. I'm talking about wow. the government. They recovered quickly from 2009 because they killed all the leaders, and they made certain there was no other demonstration to follow on. This, this deep cut so deep. It, there's huge potential problems for them. I don't believe this will not will lead to an overthrow of the regime. No one knows that for sure, to be frank about it. As of now, you do not. Do not know. But the fact is, the Iranian government is going to be hurt. I don't think they'll ever be back to where they were because they have so squandered the opportunity to improve the quality of life of the people as a result of sanction relief, $100 billion plus, and what they've got here is an economic deteriorating situation. Oh, that's a strong statement, General. Heather Nauert was talking about the people of Iran who thought they were going to get a good deal through the Iranian nuclear deal um, and found out otherwise. Is she they expected to get something out of the Iran nuclear deal. The leaders there of that country promised that that money would benefit all the citizens, but yet we have seen Iran take that money and funnel it into the Houthi rebels in, uh, in Yemen. We've seen them send, spend money in Syria. We've seen them outfit Hezbollah. They're not spending their money on their own people. She's got a point. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. And listen, listen they're, they're buying ballistic missile technology with a single purpose only. Why do you have ballistic missiles? to deliver a nuclear weapon. And that's what they're investing in. They've got 160,000 rockets and missiles now in Lebanon in the hands of the Hezbollah. One reason only, to fire those missiles eventually at Israel. They're running the war in Syria. They started the civil war in Yemen with the Houthi rebels. They're providing all the missile technology, all the arms, all the weapons. That's what they did with the money. And it's outrageous. The, the very reason why we did the nuclear deal if remember the premise that the Obama administration made was simply this, that by legitimizing Iran as a result of the deal, they would respond positively and join the community of responsible nations and it would incentivize them to stop their malign and aggressive behavior in the region. What happened as a result of the nuclear deal and a hundred million dollars windfall? They accelerated their aggressive behavior. Uh, pretty remarkable. Move east, way east. Thirty minutes ago we confirmed for the Associated Press that the military exercises with South Korea and the United States military will go on pause now until after the Winter Olympics, which takes you to the very end of February. This is something the North Korean leadership wanted, and yeah. now it, it appears that it'll happen. What our do you think of this? I, I think it's a smart move. Listen, our, our, our policy is North Korea must denuclearize. They cannot nuclear tip ICBMs pointed at the United States. We're not going to tolerate that. But to get them to go immediately to that position, I think is too hard. Because they don't believe us. The only reason why they want nuclearized ICBMs is because they believe the United States will conduct a regime change. Their evidence of that is Gaddafi, who gave up his WMD, and we conducted a regime change after. So they don't buy our rhetoric. We've got to demonstrate to them that we are absolutely not interested in North Korea's regime change. Toning down the exercises, the frequency and the scale of them with South Korea, which are designed, Bill, to conduct regime change, and they know it. 
will be a step in that direction. Maybe this is the breakthrough that we've been looking for. We'll have to see. I'm looking at your conclusion about a military option, whether or not we're getting closer or not toward it. Is we, that imminent or not, General? Well, that's a great word. I think we are getting closer to exercising a military option because nothing else seems to be working unless this new, this new, this new issue will materialize. However, it's not imminent. And you know why? Because if it was imminent, we would be telling the, the several hundred thousand Americans to leave South Korea. Mm -hmm. We'd be evacuating our families. There would be military deployments that we would not be able to do in secret. Air, maritime, and ground forces would be on the move. That's when war is imminent. That's not right now. A lot to watch and a lot to follow. Thank you, sir. Yeah, good talking to you. General Jack Keane here in New York. Thank you.